But this is the Alpha Sessions, and I'm Emma, and I'm here with Donna L. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good. Thank you so much for your kind invitation. So how did the music thing start for you? Um, well, it started for me, I guess, from all the music, the great music that my mom used to listen when I was a kid. Like what? Um, so it was a lot of uh, Whitney Houston. <laughs> nice. Earth, Wind and Fire and Janis Joplin, Mariah Carey, wow, okay. Aretha Franklin, all the big mamas like... Uh, the big mamas. So like. I was like, you know, trying to sing like them since I was a kid. And after that, when I was 15, I took a guitar and I started learning. My cousin, she was playing, so I, I wanted to play as well. And she taught me, I never had like a proper teacher for guitar. Most of the things I just learned by myself. And that was great because it also made me to explore more harmonies and melodies. And then I arrived here a few years back and I just loved it. I did uh, an album back in Israel. I also sang uh, during the army. I was a singer. So I, I was singing to soldiers and to kids in shelters and all big, big ceremonies like performing in front of 5,000 people. And afterwards, yeah, I, I rolled and I felt like I have more, I want more. And I arrived here a um, few years back. I couldn't really live here because with an Israeli passport, you cannot stay and live here. And last year I got my European citizenship, which who knows how long this one is going to last for. <laughs> with the Brexit thing, that's what I'm referring. But uh, I'm enjoying it now. I love it. Uh, my first show in London was at Ronnie Scott's four years ago with my producer, Femi Temo, who produced the second album, Wake Up, which you can also find uh, online. We'll chat about that yes. in a bit. Yeah, so I know. So at what point, like, yeah. for you, <laughs> did you think, OK, I really want to give this, like, the best shot I possibly can? I think I was thinking about it so long ago, but... I'm very much uh, a nest, a nest girl. <laughs> okay. I love my Shabbat dinners with my family and my mom food. So I was living in Tel Aviv uh, right after my army and I was going back every weekend, every weekend, every second weekend to my family. And I wanted to leave for a long time. So I guess it, it takes courage. It's not an easy thing to go to a whole different country, different cultures. Mm. You don't have your family with you. Scary, you, no? you put everything back it, and you like being reborn again. You have mm. to do everything by yourself. No one's going to help you get the GP or open national insurance number or get the bank account or get the phone. Like you have to do everything by yourself and to have found out like how to do it. And it was a process, it was a procedure. And um, until now, I'm I'm still learning. But uh, it was a great, definitely a great choice because I think you don't really learn, you don't really learn about yourself as much if you stay in your home, in your nest, like in your comfort zone. Once you challenge yourself, once you live, then you get the opportunity to discover who you really are. Interesting. Interesting. So I haven't discovered myself yet. <laughs> my boyfriend my boyfriend hates when I say that. Interesting. <laughs> He's like, I, I get a feeling when you say interesting that it's not interesting for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my phrase when I say it's not interesting is I always go, that's a lovely story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really nice. <laughs> Take a look around Looking for a safe ground Something about this town That makes me lose the gravity And I've seen some things that I shouldn't have seen Been in places I shouldn't have been And now it's part of my reality 
But I'm not sure that this is how it's supposed to be. If I stay here, I won't fulfill my destiny. There's some holes in my life, but it clears to me that I have to set them free. So come on now, one, two, three. I'm living this down, cause it's not for me. Two, three, four. I'm closing this door, can't do it no more. Cause I have a new direction. And it's feeling everything is gonna be fine. Gonna find yeah, I just want to live far than a million miles. Yeah, far than a million miles. Ooh. Now I take a look around. Is this thing for real? Am I dreaming or I found everything I need? I'm breathing the air, wondering if I could stay here forever, but I'm still afraid. You know that it's too good to be true, but now I'm sure that this is how it's supposed to be. If I stay here for destiny, there's some holes in my life, but it clears to me that I have to set them free. So come on now, one, two, three, I'm living this down. It's not for me. Cause I have a new direction And this feeling everything is gonna be fine Gonna find my destination yeah. I just wanna live for my joy, my life My wills, my rights, my air, my life It's time for new beginning How can you know if you haven't tried Cause you can run a mile or a million But you can run from yourself your crowdfunding campaign done as well as corporation exactly yes um what made you want to do the crowdfunding campaign how does it work how can people contribute so many questions <laughs> um well it was like a hype thing a lot of uh, israeli artists musicians and also like book writers were doing that a lot at the time i guess they're also doing it now but there was a lot of hype a head start and I just said, like, I think that really can work for me. I worked a lot to get to get funded the way I did. I was working a few hours every day, sending the project to people. And it was definitely intense and crazy experience to to go through with the fans and the crowd. But it's uh, rewarding. And, it feels great. It's like you're doing a project already with your crowd and it's get people very much involved and it's like I'm not creating it by myself. Everything, everyone is with me in the process. So how does it work? People don't, people give money and you give something back? Or yeah. am I mistaking that from Kickstarter? Uh, yes, no, that's it's exactly the that's exactly the thing. Okay. You have the steps, so how how much people choose to put and so they can win to see you. I don't know, do a gig or a special CD or whatever. Yes, a signed okay. CD, yeah. two CDs, uh, get a gig, a um, few different stuff. Get a, a sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. Nice. As there are some people that they put like two grand. <sighs> yeah. Wow. And this is how mm. I actually could get to that prices. And it's still going now. Or it's finished. No, that was for the second album. Okay. Um, now I'm more focusing on. I, I'm not really thinking like, okay, I'm gonna do an album because I want to more explore myself. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm working with different producers on yeah. different kind of genres. One project is more like electronic, one is more acoustic. And I feel that, I, I think that this way it's more like fitting this generation. Cause yeah, the albums, it's nice. I love, I love doing album and being in the studio and doing the process is amazing. But then I guess when you, when you come to the conclusion that, okay, you did all this crowdfunding, you put all this money to go in the best studios and to record all these uh, uh, songs and the musicians that you brought, but then you get to the point that you finish the album and then there's no money left for marketing. And this is today, is very important. <coughs> it's part of like, it's, it's the same. It has to be, you have to put in mind that you have to also create the funding for your marketing and also create the funding for your recording. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because otherwise, yeah, all the work that I mainly did with my album was a field work. Just going out there, performing, performing, and yeah. It's hard, really hard. It's hard, but it's also, I don't know, I think Amazing. It, it, what keeps me, keeps me young, it keeps me alive, it keeps me healthy, it keeps me rocking. Keep working. Yeah. So let's talk about your latest album, um, because something that really intrigues me is, obviously it's called Wake Me Up. Wake Up. Wake Up, sorry. Um, and English not being your first language, to write a whole album, let alone two albums, in your second language must have been a challenge, no? Um, I think most of my life I definitely heard mainly English music. Okay. More than Israeli. Okay. <laughs> Much more than this is <laughs> how I got to to learn the yeah. language because I love music in English much more. Like there is great Israeli artists that I love and appreciate and admire, but English music was always a thing, a thing more mm. a thing to me. Yeah. And it's different. When I write in Hebrew, it's a different kind of genre that comes. When I write in English, it's a different kind of genre that comes. And you prefer the genre in English? Um, I think it's just more wide, it's wider. I, yeah. I love the writing in Hebrew, but it's just, it's different kind of, it's not mainstream. Fair enough. <laughs> talk, talk to us about the process of writing the album. So did you have the songs already or did you write them specially for the album? Yeah, I, I did have most of them, maybe two I wrote for the album. Okay. But yes, most of them were already written and uh, when I write, I already have like this kind of vibe that I bring to the song kind yeah. of production thing. But Femi, he took uh, the harmonies, he a bit changed some stuff. That's, uh, that's what a producer sometimes does if I let him. <laughs> um, <laughs> <coughs> I, I'm a bit of a control freak. It's like my songs, they are my babies. So yeah, I, yeah. I, like to be, I like to be in control. I like to say what I feel, but I also, like to give a hand to the producer because he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Did you walk into the studio and you had an idea exactly of what you wanted to, it to sound like or did you shape it whilst you're in the studio? Well, I think that it was a bit, a bit of both. Okay. Yeah, a bit of both. Interesting. <laughs> Come on, don't do that. <laughs> save the world remember what your mama told everything you'll turn into gold you knew somehow you found a way to make it little better for her every single day but someday you will be there on your own and what you gonna do when mama's gone all your hopes and your fears will come along will you still be strong if they could see what you have sown, would they understand? If they could have the power that you're holding in your hands. If they could even try, they wouldn't hold it for one day. 
But you knew exactly what you needed to do And it all became a part of you Time to save the world right now. Now every morning, every night, you think of ways to make it right. For what happened when he ran away? You think about it every day. But someday you will be there on your own. And what you gonna do when mama's gone? All your hopes and your fears will come along Will you still be strong If they could see what you have sown Would they understand If they could have the power That you're holding in your hands If they could even try They wouldn't hold it for one day But you knew exactly what you need to do and it all became a part of you when it's all over will you have a clue everything she did was just for you just for you just for you just for you everything she did was just for you your mama told the alpha sessions so do you think the music that you listen to when you're a kid from your mum do you use that as inspiration to put into your songs now or do you think that um the inspiration comes a lot more from your real life experiences um i think it's mainly my life experience now in my state of mind yeah because yeah when i write is definitely how i feel at the moment yeah. and yeah there are times that there are more writing time that are less writing um, when you feel like when something makes you feel so yeah when you're heartbroken or when you fall in love usually <laughs> that's those are the best time for me to write <laughs> now let's talk about um you working with also some amazing musicians because you've worked with incredible people like the drama of Erica Badu, keyboardist for Santana, um, violinist for, from Faithless. How do you meet all these people, and how does all of that like come about? Um, I guess I guess I got lucky, and <laughs> but it's also it's how you network and I like how I met Femi. I was just going every night to Ronnie Scott's, yeah. and I was out there, so I I was meeting him and. I didn't have any idea that he is who he is until I got back home and I googled him. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it was a bit overwhelming, but I guess you also create it like cuz you have this thought. When I came to London, I said I'm going to I'm going to make an album with Mark Ronson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to make an album Absolutely. with Mark Ronson and I ended up making an album mm. with Femi Temo which is which is great like yeah, you dream but in the end like life life they're created by our thoughts yeah now we spoke a little bit about the music industry in London and you listening to music in Israel but how would you compare the music industry in London to the music industry in Israel so I guess uh I don't know wow this is a tough question. I guess you can't really compare it's <laughs> two different things because yeah. you know in Hebrew they call it iskea shashuim which means it's like when they translate the show business. So it's when you translate it it's like it's not a business. It's a business of fun. Yeah. 
So w- whenever you saying, oh, uh, I'm a musician, so then, oh, so that's what, what you work? Like, is that your job? Like, do you have a day job? Probably a waitress as well, no? Yeah. Well, here I'm like, I remember the first time I came to London and I told this guy in the tube, I'm, uh, I'm a musician because he saw uh, the guitar on my back and goes, I'm a singer. And I said, yeah, you can find my music on YouTube. And the next day I came to the tube and the guy was singing the do 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 so he was <laughs> listening to my song. Told you it was an earworm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something in the mentality. Uh, it's I don't know. I felt that it's more the place for me here. Okay. So you're planning on sticking around? Uh, for now, yes. Apparently. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it hopefully, I don't know. It's all this <laughs> Brexit talk. They want to kick me out. No, no, no. I'm not going anywhere, do you hear me? I'm (laughs) staying here, here. (laughs) Looking for some education Made my way into the night All that bullshit conversation Baby, can't you read the sign? I'm looking for the details, baby. I don't even want to press your mind. Let's just say that maybe you can help me ease my mind. I am Mr. Right. But if you're looking for fast love, that's love in your eyes. It's more than enough Had some bad love Some affairs to love It's all that I got on my mind Ooh, ooh, baby, baby Ooh, ooh, baby, baby Ooh, ooh, baby, baby Looking for some education Made my way into the sun My friends all have ladies They're home with their babies I just want to have some fun I'm not looking for the details, baby I don't even want to press your mind Let's just say that maybe You can help me ease my Cause I am Mr. Right But if you're looking for fast love If that's love in your eyes It's more than enough Had some bad love Some fast love It's all that I got on my mind That you remember sending me forget me notes to hope that you remember looking for some education made my way into the night. The Alpha Sessions. Whenever before we have a guest come on the show, I normally do like a bit of digging around on the internet, see what I can find. Cha-chum, cha-chum. Um, <laughs> and I was having a nosy on your website, and it looks like you've done the voice in Israel. I have, I have did, yes. Okay, next. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I didn't want to go to the voice. The production there, they really like chased me for six months. Yeah. And I was telling to my mom, mom, I think I'm gonna put the complaint in, in uh, the police because they're ah, really? harassing, like harassment. harassing me every day and sending like agents, different agents to my shows yeah. to tell me they want me in the show. And then my mom said like, okay, if 
someone knocks on your door and you don't want to let him in, but maybe it could be an, in, an opportunity. And then you said, why didn't I open when I could? Yeah. So I said, okay, mom, I, I guess I'm going to listen. Yeah. And uh, it was an experience, definitely, like the voice, but it's, it's not a musical experience at all. Yeah, fair enough. It's reality, is they edit you, they, they put you in a closed room like that in front of a camera for a few hours. What, like this? Yeah, well, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> high budget production. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we took the yogurt put away, I told you. Uh, that's <laughs> good, Thank, thanks for that. <laughs> But anyway, they just, they, they edit it in such a horrible way. Like they ask you a question and then they're going to take an answer from a different question that they ask. Yeah. So it's not genuine. Ah, no, it's not genuine. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so. All right, let's move on. <laughs> um, it was a good commercial. It's okay. definitely a good commercial. A good commercial for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Mm. All promotion is good promotion. So. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That's it. Um, let's talk a little bit about... You and collaborations. The world is your oyster, as they say. Mm. You can pick anyone to work with in the world, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Wow. Wow. Just one? Just one. Just one? Just one. You can have maybe like a support act and a headliner if you want. Mm. And I'm going to make you pick a venue in a minute, so keep it in the brain. I would pick Prince. <laughs> I would pick Prince. Prince. Okay. I would pick Prince. Where? Like I don't know, Wembley? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's right across the corner. It's the closest one here. Three <laughs> stops away. Fair enough. And we're <laughs> Wembley. So. Geographically limited. I like oh, it. Central Park. Um, or I, both? Both. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you're doing this dream show with Prince. Mm. And you can have any dream rider that you want. Okay. A rider. Rider. What would you pick? Like food, like drink, like TV, like movies, like whatever you want. Somebody once said a goat. A goat? A, a goat? Yeah. Uh, a goat. <laughs> I would have a, a, a masseuse. There you go. <laughs> That's what I need <laughs> all the time. Especially One masseuse? This. Okay, cool. But a few, few, few of a them. Few masseuses. Okay. So they can rotate. Better, <laughs> so they can rotate. One of Between the you and Prince. <laughs> <laughs> the Prince, of course. <laughs> That's the funniest interview I had by far. Excellent. <laughs> yes, I would call it the hummus interview. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and if people Look, want to we have so many viewers. We have Ooh. like seven viewers. That's quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to find out more about you, um, how can they log on? What pages should they be visiting? They should be visiting my website or my Instagram. Um, I'm very much active these days or on Instagram. We're on Instagram live now. We're on Instagram live okay. now. So just check out Dana L Official. It's pretty simple to spell. It used to be Dana Likvonik and that wasn't easy to spell. <laughs> it took ages. <laughs> so I just decided to make it simple. Dana L, D A N A E W -L, L E, official. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much, Emma, for the invitation. And hopefully, we'll meet again soon hopefully in one of my live on. shows. Yes, let's do it. Come on. Juju's every Thursday. Don't forget it. Tell it to <laughs> them. Shorties. Yes, we're going to be there. Just me and you running around without thinking oh the time without thinking oh the time cause I'm a trying to speak but your voice always speaks calling my name please stop because 
I don't need to hear a thing. And it's better if we just forgive, cause we gotta move on. Someday you'll wake up alone and realize it's gone. TV.